Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim is one Yahuwah, and thou shalt love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Hallelujah. 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 Zion. And shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. To the 12 tribes of Israel that have been scattered worldwide to the four corners of the earth. Shabbat Shalom. Yes, Zion, another day that Yah has made. Let us, who? Us, who? Us rejoice. And what? Be glad in it. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. More right. You can't mean us. Why not? He don't mean us. Why not? We're on the bottom. Okay. We struggling. All right. Man, our families is tore up. Okay. Man, we the last high first five. Okay. Man, they calling us black. 
Okay. Well, I, I, I cried all night. Okay. You don't even know what it's like out here struggling, man. What been woke? Okay. <laughs> Nothing you can, no excuse you have, Zion. Nothing you can come up with. Nothing. Can negate the command and the admonition. This is the day that Yahuwah has made. Woo! The devil didn't make the day. The European didn't make the day. The Hamite didn't make this day. Yah made this day. Said, remember the Shabbat and keep it holy. Keep it separated from all the other days. Keep it set apart to worship, to pray, to praise, to find rest for your soul, Zion. This is the day that Yahuwah has made. Let us, <laughs> oh, us, yes, us, 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 rejoice. Let the rest of the world be down in the dumps. Let the rest of the world do the complaining. Yet, let the slumber brews spend this day. Uh, you know, yeah, they 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 just can't smile. They can't let them do the. Hey, let the heathen heed on these days. That's what my nephew said. Let the heathens heed on their day. But watch this. This is Yah's day that He made. We shall do what? It don't matter what you're going through today. Everything else got to be put to the side, Zion. Why? Because today is the Shabbat. He made the day. He told us to rejoice. And I, I have a whole word, a whole word study on that word rejoice. You know what that word? I'm just going to give you a little piece of my study. You know that word rejoice? Even in English means return, re. And then if you use the word, the rejoice, the root word of that is joy. <laughs> so just right off the bat, it says rejoice means to return back to joy. And so if you left joy some kind of way this week, today you're supposed to return to joy. And then, of course, joy personified is none other than who? Hamashiach. So every time we seem to get pushed off track, if you want to be able to rejoice, all you got to do is return to who? Hamashiach, your king. <laughs> and so every Shabbat is like a reset. We come back together. We give him praise, honor, and glory. And next thing you know, we woke up, might have been feeling a little something, but boy, by the time we rejoice, we done forgot. How much we owed? <laughs> we, we, when we start praising him, lifting up his name, studying his holy scriptures, we forgot what so-and-so said to us about something that didn't mean nothing. Black man, why? Because we returned to him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And told our about for you, my father's children, that come up in this room on this holy Shabbat in less than 10 minutes, 356 people done climbed up in the room. What? <laughs> yes, we want to learn. We want to know. We want to we wanna study the Bible. Y'all can do something else later on, but today is the Shabbat. So we're going to gather, like he said, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, especially in these last days. So Zion is good to be with you. I'm Morio Shiyahu of the, of the ARC, which is an acronym for the Awakening Remnant Coalition. The Awakening Remnant Coalition is a coalition of ministries and people and workers who have a single goal in mind, and that is to help wake up Jacob. And what we and the way we do it is everybody do their part. As a Maori, I got my part. You some of y'all got your part. 
and everybody do their part to help wake up Jacob. And you're going to find out that Jacob is going to start waking up. So we give our by our praise for you and honor and glory on this holy ship by. Hallelujah. 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 And those of you who are in the room for the first time and, and you stumbled across it, you got recommended or somebody uh, gave you, they, they shared the message with you and you said, hey, let me see what the ark is talking about. Let me see what this more you Yahweh. Get it straight, you heathen. It's Yoshiyahu. <laughs> Once you're a Yoshiyahu got a say on the day, you got your pens and paper ready and trying to find something to critique. Oh, you're going to get a lot today. <laughs> I'm glad you're in the room. Hit subscribe while you're here. How about that? Help us reach more of Israel, that scattered worldwide. And you're going to listen to the message. You're going to say, boy, do they do that every Shabbat? Mm -hmm. And sometimes during the week. We don't wait a whole week. Y'all been learning like this? Mm -hmm. Y'all getting the and they and they come in the room almost jealous. Y'all been in the room with him how long? And some people put it, man, we've been in here five years, six, seven, eight, ten years. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, we got a thousand messages like this. Yes. In other words, this ain't no fly by night. We didn't wake up yesterday and decide we just gonna start teaching the Bible. No, uh-uh. I'm, I'm this is my 32nd year pastoring. How about that? We, we, we got the Hebrew words now. I'm a Mori, but I'm still teaching the word of Yah. He opened my eyes about now going on 11, 12 years ago to who I was and whose I was. Found out that I'm the bloodline descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I said, oh, wait, wait, wait. That means something. <laughs> you Israelite, you Hebrew. I already knew. Who those people were because they told us we was Gentiles. Then when I found out we was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's kids, that was my grandpa. I said, oh boy, we're in a covenant. And all these years later, I'm still here behind this camera and happy to be here with you, Zion. And those slumber brews in the room and you heathens that are climbed up in the room, I'm happy to be in here with you too. Hallelujah. And as I said before, I'll speak to the witches that's in the room. All you witches and warlocks that's in the room. First of all, you witches that's in the room. Trying to catch the more on a sound bite so you can promote your channel. Welcome to the room. I don't understand why y'all slacking in your job though. Because your witchcraft help promote the channel about 10,000 subscribers. We need 10,000 more. You done got lazy. Get to work. We need 10,000 more subscribers. Why? Because them 10,000 are going to tell another 10,000. And you know what's going to happen? Jacob going to wake up all over the world. Because you will throw up a five-second sound bite, but they'll listen to the whole two hours of the message. Turn around and say, oh, them was witches that put up. Get a little, hey, thank you, witches. Thank you, witches. I would have never found the more if it wasn't for you witches. I I, I know y'all going to hell, but on your way to hell, thanks for showing me the, the ark. And, the, <laughs> and I don't understand you witches. Most of y'all single sitting around tables in dark corners trying to make a video about the more, right? Where's your husband? Oh, he a little sissy, huh? Because, hey, I don't understand how he let his wife and wives, plural, spend so much time trying to decipher another man. I'd be like, hey, baby, hold on, baby. You spend a lot of time. What's going on? <laughs> you witches and warlocks. That's in the room. Subscribe to the channel and share it. I can speak for my, I can speak for myself. How come I'm of age? Sound about the Maury. I, I can talk for myself. If someone want to know what the Maury said, they all they got to do is click. I don't preach in a corner. We, we put these videos out on 
public every week. If you notice, I don't I don't even have a a a, a private thing going on. No, why? Because we don't know where Jacob is. We don't know where Israelites have been scattered. And we want, there may be some, there may be some Israelites uh, listening to me right now in Russia. I'm over in Russia. Oh yeah, we spread out to the four corners of the earth. So you know what? We keep it public. So anybody could see it. Somebody may be down in Madagascar. Somebody in South Africa. Waking up to truth. And only Abba can do it, I'm telling you. And he's doing it. So Torah Rabbi. And Torah Rabbi for all of you, my father's children, who support this work so that we can do it. Because there's no way I promise. Y'all know this anyway. There's no way I could put in this amount of time in research and Bible studies and in current events and things like that. And at the same time, have to spend eight hours on a plantation somewhere with my focus doing something else. No, instead I can focus on this Bible, on these words and on helping to wake up Jacob because you make it possible. If you didn't make it possible, there's no way it could come out like this. And hallelujah again, um, just to let y'all know, especially those coming in the room for the first time, I didn't wake up the truth and start and then decide to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> That's not what happened. <laughs> no, uh-uh. I've been doing this a long time. I woke up the truth and realized I need to help wake up Jacob. That was before YouTube was even live. I know some of y'all don't believe that, but it's true. And it's been the support of the faithful that has allowed us to keep it going. I'll get back to that in a moment, but for now. I've been up here 17 minutes and I haven't even asked if y'all can hear the more. Can, can you hear the more? Is the video okay? If it is, would you please place a seven in the chat? Because some of y'all, boy, one time I went 10 minutes. They said, Maury, we couldn't hear nothing you said, but we were reading your lips. <laughs> they said we was reading your lips and putting hallelujah in there anyway. <laughs> okay, them sevens. Them sevens is in the room. Some of y'all remember that. Them sevens are in the room. That means we can hear and we can see okay. And that's what we do on this Shabbat is that uh, we come together and we uh, we put the numbers in just simply to say, yes, we we can see, we can hear, we understand, we agree, and things like that. So you're invited to place numbers in the chat. You're invited to place scriptures in the chat and things like that because if it's going to be, it's going to help Jacob to wake up, then of course we want to help Jacob. Now, you rabble rousers, you need to be aware. We have some administrators that is swift boots out there. Oh, boy. And they will kick a rabble rouser to the moon. They can smell it when a person is in the room trying to wreak havoc on the holy Shabbat. We didn't come in here for no havoc. If you want if you want some havoc, then meet, get another day. We have a website. Send your question over there. But today we want to worship and we want to learn. And want to be encouraged. By the way, I want to say this on this Holy Shabbat. Every now and then when I'm going through the chat, I'll see a verse or, or something that a person will put. And I'll be like, wow, I need to write that one down. Why? Why do I do that? Because nobody knows it all and nobody can recall it all at the same time. Sometimes some of you Israelites are studying the Bible and you go, boy, this is a good verse right here. The more just mentioned it, it goes right along with this verse. And you click it in there, man, I'll read it. I'll say, oh, let me take a note of that. So what are we doing in that case? Exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Iron, sharpening, iron. Scriptures, supporting script. Lining up the, the word with the word. Interpreting the word by the word. And as a result, as we work together, more truth is going out to the world. Yes. And I give our by y'all praise and honor and glory for that. That the world is waking up. All right. If you're still in the room, would you put a nine in here? Put a nine. I'm going to move to my next. Before we get to our study on this Shabbat, I wanna, I wanna talk about 
some things that's going on during y'all quote unquote Black History Month. Which is an insult, by the way. It's a byword. This is y'all mother knowing good and well you're brown. Allow them the place on you, and I've already done a whole message on this, allowing them the place on you, a byword with negative connotation, and you're taking it. Why? Sons and daughters of slaves, you don't know no better. We're going to talk about you're going to turn it good. I got an email from one of the administrators that said, Maura, you know when they first tried to put that word black on us, our, our elders rejected it as an insult and sent me the article. I got it on my phone. Rejected it as an insult. Our ancestors here in this nation said, oh, no, you don't call us black. We're brown. All the negative connotations. But they pushed it. And I've, I've been doing a series about what black ain't. <laughs> black is not. And, this, and the title of that series is going to be studied. We are going to be titled, We Are Not Black People. That's going, to, that's going to be the title of the series when we finish it. I got about two or three more little short videos we're going to do on that. We are not black people. If anybody has been following the series, would you uh, uh, put a 12 in here for the 12 tribes of Israel? Put a 12. If you followed the series at all, if you've seen it. I said, we are not a black people. We are not, uh, there is no black tribe, there's no black nation, there's no black, oh, look, hallelujah. It means that the work is not in vain. It means that the work is not in vain. A lot of research and study went into them, into those lessons, Zion. And I appreciate you all at least watching them, hallelujah, and sharing them. We have some more to go. We have some more to go. I'm not finished. But one of the messages shocked the whole world. Well, the whole world is in an uproar. <laughs> I said, the more, eh? Done put out something that's got the whole world talking. Oh, yeah, they, everybody talk. What did you, more, what did you tell the world? What did you actually tell them that they were trying to keep secret? I told the whole world that we're from Mesopotamia. <laughs> my phone, <laughs> my email, bling, 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 bling. My, yeah, hey, amen. I, I, I looked at that thing, man. You was right. <laughs> April, I know. I would have never told Zion that if I didn't know where I was. Look, I already knew I was right before I told it. But I appreciate you all. I appreciate those you wrote me to let me know that you that you researched what I said. I appreciate that. <laughs> I had to share that video. Which one? The one when we chose this from Mesopotamia. So why? I looked at it for myself. Oh, you did, huh? Hebrew. So where'd you think he was from? I, I don't know. They, they never told me. I, we were just black power. But I, I didn't know. <laughs> now you know. Well, well, how do they call us African-American if we're not even from Africa? The, the Fertile Crescent used to be regarded as part of the continent. And I'm gonna get to that when we start talking about the beast. When the beast rose from the earth, we'll get to that later, the beast system began to redraw lines and they started calling East Africa, Asia. to throw you off Zion from who you are and whose you are. Cause you looking all over the continent trying to find your daddy. 
You looking all over the garden. Are you my father? Are you my dad? And every 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 him my tribe like, I am not your father. <laughs> I am not your father. Well, who is my father? And it wasn't until the Murray took you to Mesopotamia and showed you the pictures, and you finally found your dad. You said, "Oh, from Abraham, from the Ur of the Chaldees, from Shem. Wow, this is my land, the Fertile Crescent. This is my people, Afro Asiatic, huh? Wow, the whole world." Whole world will, saw that video was like, yeah, and, and you know what? I was glad to do it because we've done it before and we've referenced it before. But I was glad to to just sit back and talk to you all about your roots and where you're really from. So maybe you'll stop making jokes like, uh, you know, them sand niggas. Because now you're talking about the black people from the Mediterranean which you don't even realize that's you, you from the Mediterranean. It wasn't always sand. At one time, it was the Fertile Crescent. It was the most beautiful, uh, tropical, flourishing place on planet Earth. That's where you're from. Over the years, because of the curses, it has turned into sand, yes. But at one time, it was not sand. So the news shocked the world, told our Rabbah, we give y'all praise, honor, and glory. And you know, I was talking to somebody about this uh, yesterday, and they were like, Maury, it's good you put it out there. And we said, because you cannot unring the bell. Bing, we rang the bell. Now people got to wrestle with it. If you wrestle with it, you're going to come up with the exact same result. The Hebrews are from Eber. Eber is from Shem, and Abraham is from Ur of the Chaldees. Hallelujah. Let's continue before we get to this message, Zion. Because they still trying to get you, even after the Moray told the world, we are not black people. Stop calling us that. It's an insult. We're brown. We're Israel. We're Israelites. We come from 12 tribes. We are one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Our nationality is Hebrew. We are one of the 12 tribes. I told the world, stop calling us that. We are from Abraham, who is what? From Eber, I bear. You don't call me black as though I don't have no culture, no history. I saw a documentary not too, uh, a couple of days ago during your Black History Month that said that the black people are a made up race in America. Made up. The slavers made up a race called black. And, and this is what they said in the documentary. And because no one is for certain where these black people came from, they made up their own nation when they got here called Black America. You were lying on one in your breath stank. And I'm hollering to the top of my lungs until I can't holler no more, waking up neighbors and, 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 and kids got to... <laughs> Talking about men, and, and y'all still going to do that, huh? During the Black History Month. You just going to over talk them all, Ray. What's wrong with you heathens? If I tell you I don't want to be called that no more, respect me. You respect everybody else. I thought we were in the woke movement. Ain't the woke movement I can identify with who I want to identify with? You got people of all different colors talking about, or all different gender, whatever they want to call it. I identify. I identify. And if you call them something that they don't identify with, you can come up on a hate charge. And I just told the whole world who I identify with, and you still put out the documentary? Just going to override the more, huh? Okay. Hell fine brimstone for you. 
leading our people astray and you slumber bruised, wake up. Wait a minute. Zion, I promise we're going to get into the lesson, but watch this. I got a question for all of you in the room. Have you noticed that this wicked, evil, perverted society is trying to steal our word woke? Did you, did you, have y'all noticed that? If you, if you notice that, um, uh, put a seven in the chat. If you've noticed that the whole world now is trying to steal our word. We started the woke thing. Look at them sevens. And listen to all you, he all you heathens out there and you slumber bruise. See, you keep thinking you're going to slide things on the morrow. You don't understand. I'm a seer. Yeah, well, you think you said, no, I got called to do this for, for Zion. I don't think I'm anything. I know I'm a seer for Israel, for the nation. You heard us talking about waking up to truth. That's what you heard. We've been saying this now for 10, 15, 20 years. We've been talking about woke is when we realize we're Israel. That's when you woke up. When you were in us, when you were asleep, you thought you was a Gentile. When you were asleep, you thought you was black. When you were asleep, you thought you just came from the continent of Africa, didn't know where. But when you woke up, you realized I was an Israelite and I need to keep the laws, statutes, and the commandments. We realized we were Israel. We realized we were a part of the, uh, we, that our lineage and our history was biblical. So when we use that term, it meant that we came to the knowledge of who we are and whose we are based on Torah. Then about a year ago, uh, I started hearing people say, well, you know, there's a woke congregate, uh, uh, generation. They woke. And I'm like, they woke. They know we're Israelites. <laughs> they know who we are and whose we are. They realize they got to keep the laws, statutes, and the commandments. They woke. And then I found out that, that that woke don't mean nothing. That woke come from the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, Elemental, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z people. They talking about they woke. I said that the alphabet gang is done stole out. So now they don't even want us to be able to say that we're woke because woke mean that we go along with the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z crowd. So if we don't go along with the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z crowd, we sleep. Why are you heathens? You satanic, demonic devils, you trying to hijack the awakening of the Hebrew Israelites stealing our turn. We even say we got to wake up Jacob. We made a rhyme out of it. I got it from one of my brothers who was woke before me. He said, man, look, it's about waking up Jacob. And I said, oh, that's cool, man. It, was, it rhymes, wake up Jacob. So then we start talking about, are you woke? And the, and the whole idea was, are you woke to truth? Are you woke to who you are? Because the, the, the woke was to the truth and, the, and being woke was to Torah. Hey, hi, Jack. <laughs> I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the Moray hit the rock. See, see, we had we had a crowd that was so uh so disruptive and, and so worrisome, murmuring and complaining and talking bad that that my cousin Moses. They got on his nerves so much after 40 years, man, he couldn't take them. Boy, he said, you rebels, must we give you water from a rock? Woo! Woo! They pushed him to the limit. They pushed the most, the meekest man on earth. According to the Bible, Moshe was the meekest. That means he was the most 
under control human being that there was. He was the one man who could always keep it together. He was the one man who could keep all of his power and authority under control. The one man that could do it. What a man. But the, well, 40 years of them Israelite, man, he lost it. What's the word? He, uh, what's the word? He, he, he flipped. <laughs> what's the word? For a moment. He just, he couldn't, he couldn't take it no more. <laughs> just pushed him to the edge and caused him not to be able to cross over into the promised land with Israel. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. He snapped. And I think that's what these slumber brews and these heathens is trying to do. And even some of you woke, so quote, quote unquote, Israelite, uh, you're trying to make the Maury snap. Uh, is that what's happening? They got to get that. They got to get that to hit the rock because he'll forfeit. Now, how about this? How about I go off into the mountains and go pray? You might not hear from the Maury for a couple of days or whatever. What is he doing? Yeah, help me not to hit the rock. Yeah, help me not to hit the rock. Y'all help me not to hit the rock. I done already told these Hebrews they not black. And they keep talking about they black. Y'all help me not to hit the rock. Yeah, I told them that Abraham was from Ur of the Chaldees and not from Canaan, not from Canaan. Yeah, please help me not to hit the rock. I done told them black is a byword. They still talk about them black and I'm proud. Y'all please help me not hit the rock. I told them, I've been telling them, y'all to put down all oh, the abominations, y'all, but they still talking about all we got to do is pray for our food and it just automatically get clean, y'all. Please help me not to hit the rock. Help me not to hit the rock. Help me not to hit the rock. <laughs> so y'all got the glory spending, spending hours and hours praying for one thing, not to hit the rock. <laughs> y'all, please. How about y'all? I know if Moses, hit it, I know hitting the rock is in my, I know it's in my cards too. So I just want to help me not, if he did it, I'm not going to think of myself more highly than I ought to think because I'm not close to him. So yeah, please help me not hit the rock. Please, yeah. please help me not hit the rock. <laughs> too close to the kingdom to just have to peep over and look at it. You Israelites in the room. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> it seems like every time we say something, that the world turn around and, and say something different. And then, and then they use some other quote unquote woke people to try to talk to us. I've been telling y'all, and I think you catching it. And so all I can say is hallelujah. Black History Month. No, how about this? Israelite History Month. Does that make more sense? Oh, they hijack. They, the, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. People have hijacked our month. They hijacked our movement. They hijacked our struggle. They hijacked what struggle? A black? What is black? Of course, they're going to hijack a black struggle if you consider yourself to be what? Black, ignorant, dark. Uh, what's the other word? Uh, you know, un, uh, uncouth, dysfunctional, weird. But if you would have said, we marching for Israel, oh, it would have been something different. You ain't going to hijack Israel, are you? You can't just jump in the Israel line unless you're an Israelite. Can't believe all over the country now. Here's another people that hijacked our movement. What was your movement called? We was the blacks. The black. That ain't no country. That ain't no nation. You left it open for everybody. Shoot, if I was operating in the underworld, I'd have hijacked the movement too. You didn't put no name on it. We was black people. No, you brown people. You don't even qualify for your own movement. Your 
Do they respect you anymore? No. Mm -mm. No matter who you are. Why? Because you didn't say you was a race of people. You're not a you're not a nation. There's no nationality, no homeland. Watch, watch Sleepy Joe Biden. What did he say to do during this Black History Month? I showed y'all this a couple of days ago. I don't need to show y'all again, do I? Somebody thought I was lying. I try to tell people, man, I don't be lying about this kind of stuff. Where'd I put it? Did I leave it in the other room? I might have. Oh, no, here it is. Here you go. I told y'all they don't respect you. We need help as a nation of people. And his answer was clean crack pipes. <laughs> God, I can't make this up. I can't make it up. Clean crack pipes. What is he? What what is he talking about? Millions of dollars. During Black History Month, we just we just wanted to let you know we're passing a bill to fund a program to hand out crack pipes. And some of y'all, now this is a real slumber. Some of you all are still in political parties. What is wrong with you? Especially if this is what your party says. This is what this is an answer to. One of our problems, clean crack pot, new crack pot. Ah, Mimore, what are you? I done told y'all before. I'm, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. No, I'm a Cosmocrat. How about that? I'm on the side of the one who made heaven and earth and all that in them is. The universe, the stars are the handiwork of my father. He made the sun and the moon, you heathens, get it straight. And who I vote for is him all day long, every day. Whose side are you on? I'm on his side. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. You better get it straight. You won't line me up with a person or a people. Biden has given blacks the opposite of prosperity and safety and security. The what? Y'all think, Mara, you're making that up. Uh, this is education purposes on the Shabbat. I didn't write this article. I just, I just printed this out. Gianno Caldwell wrote this. Biden has given the blacks, again, they go that term, the opposite of prosperity, safety, and security. So then we get one of our so-called uh, rich, powerful news anchors to talk to this sleepy Joe about how terrible things are for the blacks. Woo, y'all gonna understand the more one day, boy. Woo, you gonna understand me one day. I may be dead and gone, but you somebody will rewind one of these videos and say, Moray was talking about this stuff 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Now, y'all can recognize this man's face. I ain't gotta mention his name. You can recognize his face, famous news anchor around the whole world. Everybody knows his face. Let me tell you what he said to him. He said, you being a wise guy, which interpretation. Nigga, you being a smart ass. That's my interpretation of what he said during Black History Month. <laughs> You're getting out your place. Who are you talking to me and asking me questions like this for, boy? 
Don't you know who I am, boy? I'm almost, I'm 80, I'm almost 80 years old, boy. I remember when y'all used to rub my white legs and talk about, can I touch the hair on your, on your leg, boy? I remember when y'all used to look down when I walked around, boy. I remember when y'all used to know how to say yes, sir, no, sir, boy. And now you talking to me about inflation? What you know about inflation, boy? Trying to get smart with me, boy. I bit on call and had you get some lashes. I bet that straightened you out, boy. So let me call my servant there, string you up again, boy. Wise guy talking about 7.5%. You just learned how to count yesterday, boy. That's your black history, Mark. He ain't gonna say that to no Israelite. Guaranteed. Knew we familiar Israel. He gonna watch his mouth. Cause he know Israel is the apple of y'all's eye. <laughs> you gonna watch your mouth. But as long as you think you just talking to black, you gonna say anything you wanna say. And proud to say it. No repercussion. even though what was said was right. Watch this. This is during your history month. Rent is the highest in 20 years. Is what? Electricity, the most expensive since 2005. Furniture prices higher than ever. The staggering cost of the staggering cost hitting American pockets under Biden as inflation soars to the highest point in 40 years. If that happens, and it is happening, and he get called on it, he say, boy, who are you talking to? I do what I want. Why? Because that don't affect him. It only affects us, Zion. When this happens in this nation, Guess who it affects the most? I'm going to use the term that they use. The black, the dysfunctional, the low, the impoverished, the ignorant, the da 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 He don't care. He told him, you better watch your mouth, boy. You know who you're talking to. That's why That's why I need y'all support, <laughs> Sion. That's why the Maury needs your support. Why, Maury? Why? Why? Because I can't go get that job at, at CNN. I cannot have that job. I can't I can't work for for that job because if he'd have told me, watch my mouth, he'd have been, he he if if he'd have told me I'm being a smart out, if he'd have told me you try, and I'm a grown man and, and I'm trying to exp figure out why is he doing this to our people and he tell me I'm trying to be, I'm acting like I'm trying to be smart. They would have had to cut the cameras. I'm not violent. I'm just saying. Because I would have told him. And y'all know I would have told him. And as a moral, I ain't saying I would have done. I'm not saying I would have done. Not, but, but, but boy, my words coming back to him would have been so sharp. By the time I finished talking about him and where he come from and what he done did, all the cameras in the room would have been cut. Woo. Ooh, I bet he won't never ever say watch your mouth again. Not to the morning. Oh yeah, cameras would have been cut immediately. I'd have been fired. I'd have been out here. <laughs> I wouldn't have had nary a job and couldn't get another job. You trying to be a wise guy. And I got a doctorate. I am a wise guy. What are you talking about? Oh, you calling me a nigga. That's what you're really doing. You trying to be a smart. Oh, I can see through all that. But now. Nah, where my picture at? He just took it. <laughs> yeah. He just took it. He got grandkids and they got family, I'm sure, you know what I'm saying? So he got to think about that. Man, I got to keep my check. I wouldn't have had my check that day. <laughs> That'd been my last check. <laughs> Trying to, 
Black History Month, I'm helping, I'm, I'm helping my people wake up. You ain't black. You're Israel. An Israelite. You're the daughters and sons of kings. Judah was the royal tribe. The majority of us that got caught up into captivity from the west side of the continent that they call Africa today are actually descendants of Judah. Yehuda was the tribe that held the scepter and it would not depart until Hamashiach came. During the time of our King Hamashiach, the Roman Empire had came and taken away the authority to judge our own people from us, but that didn't stop Judah's bloodline from still being inside of us. So you just don't talk to kings and queens any old way. You don't just call us any old thing. You don't try to tell us to watch our mouth. Only another Israelite can talk to an Israelite like that. Trying to be smart. Boy. Ooh, let me calm down on this shit, brother. Oh, another, another news event. Just, just quickly on the Shabbat. I'm just trying to help people. I want you to see something. Eventually, we got to get out of it. So this is supposed to be our month of recognition, right? Horrifying moment. Purdue University cop pins black student to the ground. What student? Black, which means no repercussion. If it's a Penta Israeli student to the ground, he going to jail. <laughs> An Israelite? You can put anything in here. Give any nationality. He pent a Chinese to the ground. It's going to come out different. He pent a... Um, uh, you know, he 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 wouldn't dare do this. He pent a uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call uh, an Italian. This this cop per, from Purdue pins an Italian student to the ground and and presses his elbow against his neck. Well, you know that that ain't gonna last no time, is it? Just take out black and put in anything else. Horrifying moment when a Purdue University cop pins a Russian student to the ground and presses his elbow against his neck after someone falsely claims he was holding his girlfriend against her will. School launches into an event. But put any other race in there, color, whatever y'all want to call it, people group, other than black, and it's going to be some serious repercussion. But if it's just black, eh, it's black anyway. Police shoot dead a record 1,055 people. This is quick articles. I'm trying to get y'all out of this mindset that some kind of way claiming that you get 30, 28 days a year, some kind of way has leveled the playing field and made everything equal. Let's see what this article says. Police shoot dead a record 1,055 people last year, the highest fatality rate in the last seven years, which includes 17 minors killed and young black men, there it is again, young black men making up a disproportionate majority. Tell me, if you don't throw that title off of you and that byword, it's going to be worse for our people. This, this world is not our home. This land is a terrible, this is the land of our captivity. And for us to still be in the drunken and stupor that we were in, that allowing, even in the time of the quote unquote woke generation, allowing someone to continue to uh, apply those negative terms and put you in that cursed place, that dark, cursed, black 
place will allow them to mistreat you there. No, I'm... didn't I tell y'all that if you consider yourself black, it don't matter? This was all over the internet. Did y'all see this? I'm just going to read the headline. I'm not going to read the article. Doctor sues J.P. Morgan Chase Bank for refusing to deposit, not take out money, refusing to deposit her check because she's black. You see that term? So now I'm not talking about the ghetto, am I? I'm not talking about slums now, right? I'm not talking about the, 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 the disinherited and the quote-unquote poorest of the poor. Now I'm showing you a doctor, which proves my point again. This is a doctor during Black History Month. can't deposit her check. You, maybe, maybe y'all never get it, <laughs> but it's because she's carrying the byword. And as a result, the world don't know she's Israel from the tribe of Yehuda? Because if they did, they'd have to act right. But because black has no backing, it has no people group, it has no land, there's no representation of black in the United Nations, there is no black king of black, there is no queen of black, there is no, there is no tribal leader of black, there is no, so what can this poor child do except try to go to the very people that wouldn't take her check, she got to go to them and try to sue them because they wouldn't take her check. But if we was a nation, knowing that we was Israelites, and someone treat another Israelite like that, we say, oh, wait, hold on, man. Hold on for a second. You did what to who? Maury, you stayed out there a long time today. Oh, yes. Bonus time. To prove my point. Just to prove my point. If you don't throw that byword off and you keep talking about you want to advance as a people, and like, as, a, as what people? And we need our community. What community? Man, we need, if we just had uh, uh, equal right for who? Because it's obvious that the word black ain't got nothing to do with skin color. Hallelujah. I just the other day was in a store and got some snacks. And the person that took my money, skin was way darker than mine. Would you consider yourself to be black? No. Really? What are you then? Punjabi. Oh. You went straight to a people group. Would not allow the more or nobody else. Put him in no black box. Only sons and daughters of slaves is allowing that. You better stop if you want to see a difference. And it'll change your mind about who you are. And it'll also change your children's mind about who they are, if you can do that. Now watch, I was talking to Yaron and some other said, we're making a, 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 an effort to stop just to see. And within about two weeks, all of a sudden now we can't stand the term. I said, I knew it was going to happen. And it's happening all over the world. I just wish y'all would share these videos and uh, tell the people you know, who you are and whose you are so that we don't have to go through another year like this. It doesn't matter if people believe you or not or accept you or not. That's not the point. The point is truth. You shall know the truth 
And the truth will do what? It'll make you free. Hallelujah. 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 If y'all still in the room with the mall, Ray, we've been in this room. That's the fastest <laughs> hour I've ever had with y'all. <laughs> Would you do me, do the mall a favor and please uh, play some 100 in here. Let the whole world know, yes, we've been rolling with you this long. Hallelujah. And it's encouraging us that we can continue our journey out of this sleep, that we can wake up to who we are and whose we are, Zion. Our king is coming back, and he's coming back for his people. He's coming back for his assembly. And we ought to be without spot or wrinkle, and we should be giving him praise, honor, and glory at his return. All right. We're getting ready to get into this lesson on this holy Shabbat. Getting ready to shift gears for a second. If these messages are helpful. If the ark means something to you, if the teachings of Moriyoshi Yahu Dawid are actually making a difference in your life and in the life of your family, then I pray that you will support the work. I started thinking about there's there's two sides of being a Moray, especially now that everybody's talking about they woke and blah blah blah. It's two sides to being a Moray. On the one side, it is a burden. It's the work of, of the kingdom that Yah has given me to do. It's a lot. Y'all have no idea. It's a lot. Because I still have to be, I'm still more. But guess what? I'm still a daddy too. Yes. My children want to go to Build-A-Bear. <laughs> I'm still a dad. They want to go skating. They don't, they don't look at their dad as the more of the ark. They look at their dad as daddy. We they, when they get up in the morning, they want some breakfast. <laughs> they want they want to go hang out at the park with their dad. So on the one hand, I got I have to be able to balance that. Of course, it's a, that's of supreme and utmost important. And so I got to have that time. But then, of course, on the other hand, the reality is I am a moray in Israel. And I need to spend as much time as I can to help wake up Jacob. And this is how Yah is allowing me to do it. That's all I wanted to say. So it's two sides. On the one hand, yes, it's a, it's a burden. It's hard work. But that's a, it's cool, though. It's the joy of Yah. And on the other hand, it's also a privilege to be called to do this for Israel, especially if I can help you see the text in a way that you've never seen it before and maybe open your eyes to some of the things that's going on around you. That's really the source of our problem as a nation of people. So if you want to support the ark, it's in the uh, it's normally listed in the chat. And as you support the work, we sure appreciate it. We also support other works and other ministries, and we do benevolent work to help um, the hurting of our people. Hallelujah. We know we can't help everybody, but we help who we can. And um, Toda Reba, every time I put this on, I think about well, how sometimes you know you do something for somebody a long time ago, and they don't forget. It's just a reminder to me that our work is not in vain, Zion. And there's so many more. This is just one I'm just saying. It's a reminder. And you remind me all the time when you give. Told our about for the administrators in the room. Thank you all for your time and your effort together. This message that we got coming out of 13 today is important. So I pray that during the time we're going to pray and, um, and we're going to give to support the work of the art, we're going to come back. We will be in, yes, Revelation 13. And we're going to expose this beast today to stop our people from being afraid of our own Bible. <laughs> Once we expose this beast, y'all going to be like, but anyway, we'll be there in a moment. So if you would like to give to the ark, uh, this is a good time to do it. Let's see here. Once again, let's listen to our 10 commandments. Uh, I laid this down. I've been playing this every week for a while now. <laughs> Because this is what it's really about. Abaya. Yah commanded us to bless your people. 
to as we here, give God, to support this way. work. Hallelujah. For our good always. Hallelujah. That he Hallelujah. might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah, our Elohim, as he has commanded us. Praise you, Father Yah. I will not have any other Elohim before you. Nor bow down to any graven images too. I won't take the name of Yah, my Elohim, in vain. I'll do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give our body our praise, honor, and glory, Zion, for allowing us to come together on this holy Shabbat, that we might examine the holy word of Yah. Today, I want to talk about that second beast from the book of the Revelation that everybody is so scared of. I want to talk about the mark of the beast to prove to Zion once and for all this is our book and that we are being told by our ancestors, Yahakanah, concerning the things that were, that is. And that is to come. And we're going to set the record straight for the whole world. Why? Because the European handling our book 
a misrepresentative, so cold-blooded, trying to protect himself and his ancestors and his false religion, that he has actually took our book, rewrote it and recommentated. I know that's not the right word. Wrote a commentary on our own book and then handed it back to us and got our people shaking in their boots to read their own Bible. Oh, y'all in the revelation? Who I stay out that book? Who I stay out that book? What are you talking about? You stay out that book? scary. What book is scary? The devil, the devil, six, six, six. Woo! I'm so scared, man. I read that book right there. Matter of fact, I leave that up to the scholars. Uh, uh, Rev, pastor. I thought you was a scholar. Didn't you say you went to cemetery? You got them degrees hanging on the on the wall. What are you talking about? You leave that up to the scholar. <laughs> oh, boy, we didn't study that anymore. I know what we studied. What did you study? He died, he died, he died. What day did he die? We died on Friday. Well, you didn't study nothing. You don't know nothing. You need to shut up. Who told you you didn't preach to our people? Shut your mouth! Wow! You claim that read this book and say he died on Friday? You can't count to three? And yet you run in the largest congregations of people in the, in the world. You're leading our people astray and you're afraid of one of the books? How you teaching the Bible? How you say you believe the whole Bible and don't even know the Bible? No, I'm here to set the record straight. And just like on last Shabbat, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen because the most I've been putting these things on my heart so heavy. I, I, it's, I can't explain it to you, but they've been on my heart so heavy. I already know the things I'm saying is going to change the world. I know that. It's okay. Because the world changed the book. Y'all didn't change his word. The world changed his word. So what is Moray doing? All I'm doing is showing you how he actually wrote it. So that you don't have to. You don't have to follow the rudiments of the world and the doctrines of demons anymore. We're in a woke generation, right? You can study. There is no book off limits. There is no book in your Bible, Zion, that's scary. <laughs> there is no book that's mythology. There is no book that has been done away with. Man, Paul said, Paul said that the, that the, that the law has been done away with. Paul gonna slap the mess out of you war in the kingdom if y'all allows him to do it i'm he gonna take pleasure in slapping every one of y'all for misrepresenting what he said there's no way apostle paul who was a pharisee would say throw the torah in the garbage every single time paul gives an admonition it's according to torah He'll say, and it's written in Isaiah, and it's written. Where do you think that? That's Torah. As the psalmist said, that's Torah. Romans chapter, the one everybody quote, Romans 10, 9. The whole Romans chapter 9 and chapter 10 is taken out of Deuteronomy and Isaiah. So how is a man going to tell you it's done away with and then use Deuteronomy and Isaiah to prove his point? Y'all in trouble for letting them heathens do that to you. But that's why y'all called me in these last days. He called me to help set the record straight. I ain't by myself. I'm one of many. But hallelujah, I'm one. And one of the things we're going get to get over today, Zion, is your fear of your own Bible. Because the book of the Revelation is not about the devil. <laughs> Keep telling y'all that. It's not about the devil. It ain't about what the devil getting ready to do. 
It's about what Hamashiach. Woo, where my picture? Somebody wrote me in here. Boy, well, right. you, you ain't supposed to give no images. He said, don't bow down to graven images, you heathens. I know the Bible. I'm helping my people because all of our Bible, all of our scripture was word-based. It's picture-based, by the way. You know that, right? Our language is based on pictures. So I'm using pictures to help my people. The book of the Revelation is about this. <laughs> the book of the Revelation is about this. Our king coming back to lop heads off of everybody who's not in the remnant and everybody who's following the devil. This is what it's about. We're going to get there. He's coming back on This is a silhouette, by the way. He's going to come back on a white horse. And he's going to have that sword. And it's going to be, he's going to wreak havoc on everybody not keeping the laws, statutes, and the commandments that's not in the remnant. This is how it ends. This is what this book is about. The whole book, when you start in Genesis, ends here with our king killing everybody who ain't following him. Our brown king from the tribe of Yehuda, from the nation of Israel, from the lineage of Abraham, from the quote unquote people of Eber, the nationality coming down from the race of Shem. It all ends with him killing everybody that ain't in the remnant. That's that's the book. And, and this picture, when he come back from that wine press, oh boy, they're gonna they're gonna literally think that he had been in a wine press because his, his garments are gonna be so red. And when he come back, he like, oh no, no, I am this ain't that ain't grape juice on my on my road. What is that? That's the blood of the heathens. And those who loved and lived in lion. That's the blood of the whore of Babylon. That's the blood of those who followed the beast. That's the blood of what are you talking? That's what that is. And that's why I know people have not read this book because that's what this book is about. It's how our king saves his people. Okay. Now, why do I say that? Because the only book in the whole, I'm sorry. The only chapter in the Bible that these people try to, in the book of Revelation, I mean, that the people try to point to is chapter 13, as though that's the most scary chapter in the Bible. And every time I read it, I'm, I keep going now like, how did they pull that over on us? When Yahakanan was using symbols, because remember, he's a, he is a, he's in captivity at this time. He's on the Isle of Patmos in prison. So he's writing to those of us who are outside of the prison, but he has to write it in terms that we can get it or that they would deliver the letter. Why? Because he knew like if a heathen read the letter before they took it to the churches that he, remember he sent this letter to the seven churches in Asia. So he knew like, okay, I got to write it this way so that when these heathens take my letter and read it, they're not going to understand it. But as soon as I hand it to an Israelite that's scattered, they read it, they're going to be like, oh, okay, I see it, plain as day. So it's written like that on purpose. It's written so that we, when we read it, we can see it. But when the heathen read it, he can't see it. And that's how it got to the seven churches. And that's how those seven churches kept it and circulated these this message all over until it finally got to you and me. And I say all praises to the Most High Yah because only a miracle could do this. I was talking to my son last week, and I said, and, and both him and I were talking about everybody claiming, a, 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 when talk about how it was tampered with the Bible, right? Everybody tampered with the Bible. But what you can't do is tamper with Yah's word. You can tamper with, with pages and paper and pen, but you can't tamper with Torah because Torah is not from here. Torah is established in heaven. It, even if these heathens try to burn every book, 
Yah has already established his book here. Somebody else is going to get it. It's just the way it is. So, so regardless of what the enemy is trying to do to attack the Torah, we could, who I could care less than a you know what? Why? Because what we have, what we have now, has been preserved for us in this day. And this introduction is to share with you. Don't be afraid of your book. I care what your pastor said. He don't know what's in here either. Now he gonna watch this video and then act like he's smart. And hopefully he won't try to tie this into some white European. Cause that for sure mean he going to hell if he do that. If he try to take our king and make him European, make him from Japheth, well he going to hell for that one because he's from Judah. So let's find out who this is. And let's, let's read the Bible. And look, I ain't going to go too deep for y'all today. I'm going to keep it on purpose. I'm going to keep it on the surface so that when in my next lesson, we can take another level. But for now, this level is going to stay surface because you got to at least catch the surface picture of what Yehachanan is saying. That's John who wrote the book. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13 and let's go to verse 11. All right, let's go there together. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast. And the first lesson in the mark of the beast is, who is this beast? Or rather, we should say, what is this beast? Because before we can get to the mark of the beast, we need to see what the beast is or who the beast is. Did that make sense? If that may sit, put a 100 in here, please, for the moral right. That is, before we can figure out the mark of the beast, we got to at least identify the beast. Does that make sense? And look, after this, y'all ain't going to be dependent on no more commentaries for nothing. You're going to be like, these heathen commentaries are out their mind. Why? Because... Yah showed it to me so clear, and I'm going to show it to you so clear. You ain't going to need nothing but the Bible and some reference scriptures and some verses. Once you can see that the Bible is one complete book, Zion, you will see that John is simply showing us how this thing is going to end up. And of course, I'm a, this is a spoiler alert. It ends up, we win. Spoiler alert. We win. So the devil is a player. He's a player in the in the story, but he loses. Now, if you go back to last week's message, I left off saying that this this first dragon, this first beast that comes out of the water right, is going to eventually represent a people group. I shared, you, I shared with y'all that this beast that comes up out of the water will represent a people group, a, a group of people. And we proved who this group of people were through what is called colonization. And we showed how this group of people, this group colonized this landmass that y'all call Africa today. We proved it. We proved how this group of people not only colonized it, chasing after us, but after the colonization of it, put their flag there. Because when we continue to read, we're going to find out that the waters that this beast come out of is is people. So these are the people of the beast. And when these people, which represents seven, I read them to you on the previous lesson, when these seven nations came together, they represent this beast that came out the water, they went after the remnant of her seed. And Yah allowed them to have the power to overcome us. And as a result, they did that very thing. They enslaved some of us. They killed a lot of us, stole all of our resources. 
and this is eventually from these nations, every single one of them on here participated in the slave trade. And every single one of them is going to pay. That's the first beast. Do you understand that? The, the first beast is a European beast. Started as what they call the Roman Empire. That's what he saw. All right. And he said, it's coming. And did it? Oh, of course it did. And did the, oh, my history. You can read, you can read the heathens history and they'll tell you it was crime against humanity. Pursuing Israel almost to extinction if it had not been for the remnant. That's first beast. But then in the, it says in verse 10 of chapter 13, well, really verse nine, if any man have an ear, let him hear. What? Listen to this part though. That's what he's saying. He's saying, yes, this first beast did come and conquer everything. But I want to I want to talk to the one the people who got an ear. The person that leads into captivity will go into captivity. <laughs> so all of these people here who led all these people into captivity going. So that, and then he said, and he that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. So of course, I done told y'all. You're going to kill them. Why? We don't have the power to kill them. But those who killed with the sword, he's coming back to kill them with a the sword. It's going to happen. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. He's coming back to kill everybody with the sword who killed us. And that obviously that word sword has to do with killed us by violence. He coming back. It's going to be whoo. And, and he said, and this is what? The patience of the saints. In other words, this is the only thing to help us get through it. Knowing that whew, trouble ain't going to last all the way. And that everything that's high, he going to bring it low. And everybody who he took captive, he finna take them captive. And everybody who, who killed with the sword, he coming to kill them. That is exactly what he said. And that gave the saints patience. That's how we were able to hold on. Be like, our king is going to come and straighten it out. Our king going to come and kill everybody that killed us. And he going to put into captivity everybody who, who put, in, put us into captivity. That is, that is what gave them the courage to and the, and the patience to hold on through adversity and for the amount of time it's taking for our king to come back. Now, if that made sense, put a 1,000. I'm going to continue because I want to show you when we get to verse 11, then it's a, actually we're in a new thought. And unfortunately, these King James writers, they didn't separate it again, which is just weird to me. Because we're dealing now with another beast. There's two beasts. So the if I was if I was to make a proper division, like if I was writing this right, I being an Israelite, I would have had one chapter. Okay, this was the first beast, and then it ends like this. But the saints were able to endure because they knew that the same people that took them in, into captivity was going to captivity, and the saints were able to endure because they knew that the same people that was killing them, Yah was gonna come back and kill all of them. Now, next chapter, second beast. <laughs> Do y'all get it? The first beast, he think he bad, and our king is better than him. He come out here taking into captivity, and our king took him and all his, the, that beast into captivity. And that beast came out killing us, and then our king came and going to kill all of them. See, that's how that should be read, to give us encouragement, not to make you scared of the beast, but to make the beast scared of our king. That is the way John wrote it. And the same exact thing y'all going to see, watch, is he going to write about this next one? He said, he going to have another beast come. Oh, for real? So what do you think this beast going to do? You, you got two beasts against one king, huh? 
Let's see how that work out for the second beast. See how, can you guys already see how the tone and the tenor of the book of the Revelation changes when you see it the way it was actually written instead of what somebody told you? That every time the devil get ready to do something, he gets smacked by the by our king one way or another. That 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 look, y'all on the right side, even though the devil have had time to do his thing. Look, he ain't he ain't gonna win. Look, look at them yes is going. <laughs> well then put a 10,000 in here. Let's continue. Feeling good like a Hebrew should on this holy Shabbat. Sun is shining outside in California. Well, a clear day, and God done got a little vitamin D. <laughs> I hear the sun. Well, I'm feeling good. All right, let's continue. Verse 10 should be a new chapter, or a new, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 11. And I beheld another beast. So we in, we're on beast two. All right, so beast one, we already saw. coming up out the water, and I got to keep my slides together for this presentation. We already see him coming out the water, and we have already seen that his, uh, where he took, he that's Europe taking over the book, of, I mean, the uh, taking over Africa. All right. Now, let's go. Now, let's look at the second beast. You want everybody so scared of and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay, first of all, notice this beast comes from the earth. So we have one beast. Remember, both beasts represent a system. We'll talk about that in a second. One beast comes out the water, which is the, the, the European conquest of the uh, continent of Africa came out of the water. The second beast does what? Come out the earth. Now, look at this. And had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Pause. I want to show you how these heathens in English is interpreting the Hebraic thought here. Come over here. What? Mm -hmm. First of all, you're going to have to ask yourself a question. He had two horns, right? And then it says, like a lamb. Two horns like a lamb. First problem we run into. Ain't no lamb got no horns. <laughs> I'm helping Zion. Let me go and open your eyes all over the world. Lambs don't have horns. Once again, let's spread this around. Remember, Yah's word is not established on earth, it's established in heaven and given to us. So let me tell you the truth from a person who actually have raised some goats and some sheep out here. No, I didn't raise a sheep, but the goats as well have been around sheep. It don't matter whether the lamb or sheep or goat, lambs don't have horns. Did you hear the more But more right here it says he had, right here it's this plain as day it says he had two horns like a lamb. No, that's not what he's saying. Watch this. This is what it actually reads Hebraically. Y'all ready? He has two horns. Description should be comma. Pause. This beast that's coming out has two horns. Comma, just like every other, this beast right here had what? Seven heads and 10 horns, comma. After every description of a beast, it tells you his heads and his, and his horns. 
comma. Did you hear that? Did the Mare, did, did the sound echo to the four corners of the earth as it's designed to echo to the four corners of the earth? I said that it, it should pause right there. He got two horns. It should be a pause. Why? Because we're seeing one beast with two horns. The next phrase goes with the next um, with the next conjunction. So he has two horns, comma, or it could be a period there, or he could have put a semicolon, but he got two horns. Now watch this. Two horns should be piles. Then it should say he's like a lamb. So we should go back to the second beast. The first description is coming out of the earth. He have two horns. Number one, he's like a lamb, number two, but he speaks like a dragon, number three. Did that make sense? And did the eyes open all over the world? Oh, yes, they did. And if they did, put a 500,000 in here. We're not ashamed to admit, I see it. What in the world? I see it. I see it. Maury, how did you see it? I'm a Hebrew. That's how I see it. John ain't trying to confuse nobody. He's giving you this, this one beast. Another beast come up. The second beast, he got two horns. But this beast is like a lamb. That's what he said. But he speaks like a lion. This beast with the two horns is like a lamb. But he has, uh, but he has a mouth like a dragon. This is the picture he's trying to get you to see, Zion. Is that the beast that come from the earth is two-faced. He's trying to get you to see. This beast come up, he got two horns, right? He's like a lamb, though, which is a baby sheep, which, which means he appears to be innocent. He appears to be kind and attractive and wouldn't hurt a flea. He's a little lamb. But when he opened his mouth, out come dragon talk. Maury, come on, Maury. Why y'all keep saying that? Read your Bible. There it is. It says, if you understand that there's a pause at that horn, because sheep and lambs don't have horns. I'm sorry, lambs, the babies, they're not born with horns. That's, he's not saying that this baby got horns, because somebody said, like, oh boy, and John tripping. No, John's not tripping. The translators are tripping. This this beast has two horns for sure. I'm more going to show you the horns. But he has two horns, but his appearance is like a sheep. But his mouth, what he says, is like the devil. And if y'all share this message all around the world, you're going to help wake up Jacob to stop being so scared. You're going to find out that the second beast look one way and talk another. That's all your Hakanam is trying to say. This beast come up out the water, he look one way. But when he talk, it come out a whole nother thing. He come out with devil talk, satanic talk. So let's walk through this before I let y'all go. I told you, if you was in the room, you was going to see it. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. And once, like I said, you can't, you cannot unring the bell. Now, every time you see it, your, your brain will be like, whoa, why? You came in the room for that. You support the work for that. You share these videos for this very reason. 
you're not getting ready to find this in these heathen writings and these commentaries. One, they cannot see it. John wrote it like that on purpose. And number two, they just ran this thing all together. But the but the contrast, the, the contrast in conjunction there is but. He has, he's like a lion, but has a mouth. And I only found one. I searched all morning trying to find something. I only found one uh, this, uh, depiction of what he was actually was trying to say. And it's this right here. The beast has two horns. We'll talk about that in a second. But really, the emphasis is not on his horns because horns represent something in, 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 um, in, in descriptive writing, right? Because horns are not necessarily evil. Horns just represent power, right? And, and so what he's saying here is that this, this thing, the horns are not the issue because we're not supposed to be scared of the horns. The horns is not the problem here. <laughs> the horns ain't the issue in this one. The, the problem with this is this the second beast with these two horns, he looked innocent. But he's evil. He looks nice. But he wanna kill. He's like he looks like a, a the innocent of a lamb, like would never hurt it. But on the reality, what comes out of his mouth is from the devil. Once again, if I ran that, if I laid that down in such a way that all of Israel, 12 tribes waking up, will never have to once again fear your own Bible. I need you to put in here a 500,000. We can read our own Bible, especially if you're Hebrew, you'll understand. Now, as the 500,000 is rolling through here, we are told that he speaks as a dragon. We found earlier when we were in chapter uh, 12 that the dragon was cast to earth, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, so that we know that this beast here, this people group or this whatever we're going to discover, we know that he has a message that is satanic. So we only have three, if you want to use beasts, we could say two, two beasts and one dragon. Three entities that we're dealing with in the last day. That's what John's trying to tell Zion. He says, you have the actual devil told myself I'm going to keep my slides together. I'm already, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already mixed my pages up. But you, he said, you got the actual devil who got kicked out. When the devil got kicked out, he then decided to create or to make a society that will follow him. This society, European, got together and chased the remnant of her seed here and killed these people and took them captive. Seven heads. He said, no, that wasn't the end of the beast. He said, I saw another beast. Now this beast has two horns. So again, we're talking about one power that's divided. These ain't two beasts with two horns. This is one beast with two horns. What do you got to say, Moray? It's the same beast. Just got two horns. So each horn, regardless, I'm gonna use it out of context, just a little. 
regardless of the message coming from the horns, <laughs> regardless of the power of the horns, regardless of what this horn says versus what this horn says, both of these horns represent the same exact beast. If that made sense, please put a 600,000 in the chat. Two horns, same beast. I'm going to give them to you. I'm not going to keep you hanging. The horns obviously represent messages or territories of strength, of power. So this one beast rises up. And what is this beast? This particular beast that rises up is European religion. It's religion. I'm going to prove it. It's the European, European religion that was funded and fueled and have its foundation really in Babylon. We'll get to that in a moment because that, that, that whole thing is weird. We're going to show you that really what Europe does, Europe actually uh gives rebirth to a to the Babylonian religion of you know of, of, of Nimrod, Semiramis, and all that. But here in the text, we're seeing that this this uh European religion of the world now dominates on both sides. So whether you want to say it like this, you could say that this one religion has two sides but it's still one beast, it, it'll make sense. So whether we're talking about Eastern European religion versus Western European religion, it's still European religion. Whether it's Eastern Orthodox or whether it's Western Orthodox, it's still Orthodox religion. You could even go so far, and this will still make sense. You could say whether it is Catholic or Protestant, two horns, is still the same religion. It's the same people group. And I was looking at this thing, and the most highest told me, he said, really, to be honest, if you really look at this, if you really, really look at what I'm trying to tell you, that it is the European religions that have started all of the current religions that run the world. I ain't talking about the little bitty ones. No, no, no. I'm talking about major. I don't care if you call yourself uh, following the Talmud or the Quran. They both have Catholic influence. No, 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 no. Yes. European influence is what I'm trying to say. European. When you start looking deep into what's called like Islam, I'm not talking about um, people. I'm not talking about a race now. I'm talking about a religion. You will find that the Europeans have their hand primarily in the beginning and the propagation of that religion. And if you start looking at its origin, remember it's post Catholic, the Catholic, the Catholicism, Nimrod. I have all those pictures already set up. Um, once you understand that this cat right here, this religion right here, was against Hamashiach and against Torah, and for sure against us. Once you really can understand that all the the world religions after that split off of here. That's why when you look into Europe, you see Europeans in religion with quote like with Shriner caps on and half moons. More than what? Y'all haven't, haven't seen that? You haven't seen the symbols with the sword and the crescent moon? 
Europeans doing that. And when you look at quote unquote Judaism, you know, the, you know the, the ones who, who claim to follow the Talmud, when you look at them, the origin, you see, you're gonna see Europeans writing in those in those books and spreading that message. So what the Bible is saying is that there's a there is a system coming up out of the people, which will be one major system divided. It'll be split. And here is what he's trying to tell us more than anything. He said, and don't forget, it will appear like this, but talk like this. It'll appear like this, but talk like this. Now, to appear like this, which is a lamb, right? <sighs> to appear like a lamb means that it will have an appearance of Torah. It will have an appearance of our covenant. Remember the lamb, that's Torah, slain from the foundation of the world. That's Torah. And Yah made coats of skins to cover Adam and his wife. That's Torah. Yah will provide for himself a lamb. That's Torah. Take each family, take a lamb and slay and examine it on the 10th day. Set it apart. And on the 14th day at evening, slay that lamb. And if it's too much for one family, you invite your neighbor and take the blood of the lamb and put it up on the doorpost because that night the deaf angel coming. That's Torah. That's all dealing with lamb. So all of these quote unquote religions that come out of this beast, they all have to some kind of way connect to the lamb in appearance. It's not until they start talking that you realize this ain't no lamb. This is the devil. If y'all with the Moray up to this point, would you be so kind as to place a 700,000 in the chat? Because this is making it so plain, a child could catch this. Would you please put a 700,000 if you get it, that the religion will look and be connected to Torah because this is our symbol, Zion. You won't know that this is not Torah until it start talking. And when it start talking, it's going to talk with the devil. This is not mysterious because we got devil talk in the Bible. <laughs> I gotta go. Every time, every time, every time I try to teach this lesson, I try to help Zion. I want you to understand something. If he's talking like the devil, then all we gotta do to identify who this is is we gotta see what the devil say, right? And then look around and see who's teaching the stuff that the devil was talking about while he was here. And once we see who that is, we know who this beast is. Once we discover that he's like a lamb, but he talked like the devil, once we see that, all we got to do is go, all right, well then, let's see what the devil has said. And then let's look around and see if anything in this world is repeating what the devil said. Because if it is, it's part of that second beast. Hmm, okay. When I read the Bible, 
And I read it over and over and over again. The first time I hear the devil talk, he's uh, questioning Torah. Very first time I hear him talk. Yeah. Have Elohim said, uh, you can't eat from none of these trees out here? That's the first thing he said. Now, first of all, this is a snake. Now, I'm, this is a dragon here, but I'm just saying. So here's a snake, you know. I don't know what the snake looked like back then, but I doubt that it looked like the dragon. He, Mama Chua said, oh, no, we can eat, we can eat of, of, of all the trees out here, just that tree in the midst of the garden, he said, don't eat it. Don't, don't touch it. Don't even touch it, lest you die. The very first thing he said back to her, I mean, to, I pointed to, the, to, the, to, to her was, you ain't going to surely die. Is that the very first thing this devil said on record? So whatever... Whatever this thing looks like is ain't what it is. It's, this is the real thing. So any religion telling you that disobedience to Yah won't cause your death, you know it came from the devil. But the person who said it to me was so nice. He said, do you really think that you're going to die for just eating a piece of fruit? Come on. There's no way. Yah wants you to eat all the fruit that you can. All oh, this is good. He just don't want you to be smart like him, to know good and evil like him. So you look innocent, but when you talk, it's the devil. And that's the church today. I don't care what religion, you're not going to sound like the Mori into this one. All the churches, synagogues, and mosques that are not keeping Torah are going to attack Torah somewhere. That's the reason why I tell you who get caught up in these camps, y'all better watch where these people that's attacking Torah is getting their information. Because a lot of y'all don't know that I study what these campers study. Because I have to I have to address Zion. I found out that some of these campers have been following Mormons. Wait, 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 not Mormon. It could be I I I I I said. Some of them following Mormons. You know about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? They go against Torah. Some of them following Talmud. Some of them following um, Qurans. Some of them just following racist doctrine. Some of them just making up stuff as they go. Anytime something is going against Torah, it's dragging. I don't care how nice it looks. Here, this beast is European. It's Japhetic. And we're going to learn that the, this Japhetic beast that has appearance of a lamb, but a mouth like a dragon, will, according to John, and John wrote this a long time ago, he will fool the whole world except the remnant. Why? Because he has a job. So what is the job of this European beast with these two horns to look like this, but speak like this? 
That's the whole thing. Why? To support the actual first beast. So that the religion of the second beast supports the government of the first beast. That is. There it is. Man, more, more, more. Okay, all right, I hear you. Let's get back in this book and prove it. Then I'm out. And I beheld, verse 11, and I beheld a beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns. It should be a pause there. Like a lamb. Another pause there. And he spake, and I told you that that conjunction in 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 uh, it would be, but he spoke, and I think some translations have now corrected that. By the way, but he spoke as a dragon, and he exercises all power. What of the first beast that was before him? Wait, what, Mora? You just said that, of course. I just said it. <laughs> so this beast exercises the power of this beast. This beast has this beast as its preacher. This beast uses this beast to, to, to have you hold hands and press kumbaya. And when you wake up and open your eyes, he done took your land, your resources, your gold, your uranium, your oil, your corn, your, your, uh, your cotton. He has taken, <laughs> woo, he has taken your tea and your crumpets. He took your coffee beans. He took everything because he came looking like this, but he talked like this and he got you. This system supports this. That's the Bible. These are two beasts that we're dealing with. All right, let's keep going. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship what? Him? No, 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 no. Him. You're up. I know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pause for a minute. Let that sink in. His job is to get everybody to worship the European. And let me tell you something. This dude right here is on his job. Woo! I'm telling you. Because everywhere I go, I see everybody worshiping the European or trying to be European. They believe that the European is God. Why? Because the European has set himself up as God. So I'll get to this later because we, we're not going to make it in today's message. This, this image here produces this. So when this actually decides, when this beast decides to take on an actual image, it's going to be this. So that this will worship this. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Where is my... I just said I wasn't gonna do that, Zion. I just didn't keep, I keep this place my one slide I wanna have. Okay. 
All right, here we go. The resources. So, Yahakanan saw this, tried to warn us. He said, Look, this is coming. It's going to kill and, and enslave the world and, and Israel, because remember, the focus is us. Then this will produce this. This will produce this lamb looking thing like it's Torah, but it's not. When it opens its mouth, it's against Torah. Eventually, this beast will come up with an image. It'll be this image. This image will represent these countries or these people, which is a system. So all of these people have the same image. It's this image. To this very day, I'm talking about right now, we're dealing, we're in this time right now where this image is everywhere. It's here. It's global. So they were successful in getting this image into all these places. And if you did not, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But anyway, if you did not bow down to this image or take its mark upon you, you were killed. So when we talk about the Crusades and the conquering and all that, they went with crosses and images. Yes. And they used both sides, both horns to do it. And all the while acting like they sheep. But when they opened their mouth, they spoke as the devil. So that this beast is what we would then call the false prophet. Okay? So what do we have, children of Zion? What do we have? We have the devil and his description. One devil, seven heads, 10 horns. We have a beast that, the, because the devil can't kill you himself, he has to use people. So he used the European to go around the world, killing all of us or trying to kill us and enslaving us. So that system did that. Right? And that beast went after us and Yah allowed him to take us into captivity. Then the beast, then the, the second beast that rose up was the preacher or the prophet that promotes this. So this, this preacher, this prophet is not just some person that's going to appear. John tried to tell you this a long time ago in one of his letters. He said there's many anti- Christ, which the word doesn't mean um, simply just one who is uh, totally against Hamasha. It really means, it, mean, it means counterfeit. So the, the picture is there's many of these that's going to show up, but they're going to talk like this. You better be aware of that. So in the book of the Revelation, he already saw it. That's why he could write the letters. He said, you better not believe everybody who just go in this world and be talking. He said, because first of all, if they deny Hamashiach has come in the flesh, and the word flesh mean that he came as Yehuda, not some European. He came according to the flesh, which is the tribe of Judah, which is a Mediterranean brown tribe. He said, man, that, that's some, that's some anti or that's against the truth. So we now are establishing some things. The way he got this, he appeared like this, but spoke like this, and got this. Appeared like this, but moved like this, and got all this. And when he produces an image to leave behind, 
to keep everybody subjugated to him, he has an image of himself. He uses the image of himself and he leaves these images here. And now y'all know I've been to Africa a few times now. It's one of the strangest things is to be in the what they call the black continent or dark continent, right? And go into the churches and this is hanging on the wall. How? When you live there, you know where he's from. I've been to the east, I've been to the uh to the east side of Africa where um you know where our people are. How did this get in there? This. No way. Oh, no, it's more. But I'm only going to go a little bit further. And he caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. So the idea is the whole purpose of all of these world religions that are not Torah is to support white supremacy. So whenever you go, I don't care if you go into uh, a, uh, what they call a synagogue or, or you go into a Catholic, Catholic temple or you go into good old Trim Baptist Church. It don't matter which one you go in. They all have one goal in mind, white European supremacy. It's the same beast on the outside. Oh, welcome. Welcome, brother. We'd love to have you, brother. You walk in the door and this is on the wall. You know, this ain't nary one of us coming up out of Africa. Come on in, brother. Well, we're so glad to have brother Yo Yahoo. No, it's Yoshiahu. Get it straight, you heathens. Brother Yo Yahoo's with us on this day. No, 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 no. Yoshiahu. I thought y'all got a degree in Hebrew. This is everywhere. The false prophet. I know. I gotta get I gotta do this for you. The false prophet. The false prophet. This is that beast. This is the false prophet. What is he doing? He's going all over the world, enslaving, killing, and taking resources. They all working together. And got nerve to then wherever they leave, they leave this picture. And unfortunately, some of y'all grandpas and grandmas and aunties and cousins had this on your wall. And when you walked into certain places of worship, you had this in the behind the preacher while he was talking. Now I'm I'm so glad I got told young that we were brown people when I was young like 19 years old I didn't have to I didn't have to fight that mentally but this per, this person right here they all called Jesus and here in this photograph that I've showed y'all a thousand times it literally says Jesus saves now are you looking at the hats that they're wearing look at the ones in the black hats Look at the ones in the point. Look at the sign that says Jesus saves. Look at the pastor. So if they all take off, if they all take off the hats and the hoods and all that, 
they're gonna be looking, trying to look like a, a they try to look like a lamb. Oh yeah, we we believe in life, the ball, resurrection, ball. White Lord, same Jesus Christ. You Southern Okie okay, Snooky Dokie, you you ain't never read the Bible and don't know that he's black or brown. That his skin is like burnt brass. What is wrong with you? You appear like this, but you talk like this. I'm not done. Because I know the truth. The beast is here. When they left service this day, they did this. They worshiped here. And then after church did this. From here to here. They're still doing it to this very day. Man, things have changed. You think they have. This is the false prophet. This is the religion that came out of Europe. This ain't Torah. This is the religion that was organized to kill us. You see it? It's just another side of the horn. But it all goes back to the same. You see his face. You see him pointing to that brother hanging up there, them two brothers. Look, they just got out of church. Pulled them hoods off and had that public killing. That's the beast. It ain't deep. I told you I ain't gonna take you deep today. I just wanted to expose him because he can be exposed. John is telling it once you take, I'm telling you, once you put us in the picture and get away from white supremacy, you'll start to see that what John was warning you about is the very thing that people were marching streets for, marching the streets about here in this nation behind George Floyd and others and all over the world to protest. Everything, everything that happens socially starts with you, Zion, because you're the remnant. And there's only two sides. It's those that are with the remnant and those that ain't. Mamore, how do you know? How do you know that that's the false prophet? Oh, by the way, I read the whole book. I'm just taking y'all through it verse by verse. Go to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16. And let's get in around verse 12. I think I want verse, yeah, 12. I'm going to give you the three that I gave you earlier, but I'm going to show you the verse for it now. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river. Oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, all these vials come from our king. This is a punishment on the heathen. Watch this. Up, uh, up on the great river Euphrates, and the water therefore was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the what? Dragon. That's the devil. Out of the mouth of the beast. That's the system. And out of the mouth of the what? False prophet. That's that second beast. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of Yahuwah Almighty. <laughs> I ain't going to spoil it for you. <laughs> I ain't going to spoil it for you. But they all going to try to fight against our king. And it is going to be a cold fight. I told you you should read the book. They lose. It's, it's a great slaughter. A great slaughter. They're going to all come together. It's called ecumenicalism. 
the ecumenical community are going to all call each other on the phone. Amen. We can take him and be done with them Israelites forever. We could take him and be done. And them, 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 them evil spirits, them frogs going to be co convincing them heathens that they can actually take our king. <laughs> it ain't gonna be nothing nice. Not on that day. Let's go back to 12 so I can, I mean 13, so I can finish what I'm going today. I think I proved my point, but I got a little bit further to go, and then I'm gonna let y'all go for the on this holy Shabbat. If you've been rolling with the Mori up until this point, would you please put a 900,000 in this chat? If you learn something, would you put a 900,000? If your eyes open on some things, put a 900,000. And even if you are heathen and you watch this video and something, something helped you see, because see, you also can come out. Just like our people have to come out of Babylon, if you want to be saved, you have to come out too. You have to join with the people of Yah. You're going to have to keep these laws, statutes, and the commandments. Take the positions that we had to take first of what? Handmaids and servants to serve the kingdom of the house of Israel. You can't brag against the natural branches. This beast right here is killed like all the rest of them, but I want to show you how this dude operates. Everywhere this innocent looking thing top it talks with the mouth of the dragon, the devil. Let's look at these lies. Remember, Hamashiach told some Pharisees, he said, they were talking about, we Abraham's kids. He said, you ain't Abraham's kids. You from your father, the devil. And you a murderer like he was. And you a liar like him too. Every time he opened his mouth, it's a lie. Just like y'all, every time you open your mouth, you lying. And so therefore, Zion, we can get away from these lies if we understand that we don't follow the second beast, which is the world religions. We follow Torah. Let's look at it. First thing he said was to our, to our grandmama, you won't surely die. And she dead as, <laughs> she dead. He lied. King said, our, our Elohim said, remember the Shabbat, keep it holy. This thing show up and say, did he say, remember the Shabbat? Then, this, then he opened his mouth and talked. Forget the Shabbat. Shabbat could be any day of the week, anytime you could take a rest. Matter of fact, you just forget the Shabbat and just do Sunday. Or, or be like, uh, or going around teaching these Hebrews now to shift the Shabbat. Just make the Shabbat any day you want to make it. Start the Shabbat any day you want to make it. Well, you come looking like this, but when you talk, you talk with the devil. You sound like the devil. You're using the devil's words. Always going to fight Torah. Our king says, I'm going to give you a dietary law. This thing show up. Tom, when he opened his mouth, he said, the laws concerning food have been done away with. So now what does this church teach? I don't care what church you're in or organization. What does it teach? It teaches that you can eat whatever you want. It's been done away with. Mouth of the dragon. Our king said, do not learn the way of the heathen. Don't envy the way of the heathen. When you get into the lands, even though you'll be surrounded by heathens, don't learn their customs and ways. What does this thing say? You can do the you can do Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day. It's the mouth of the devil. It ain't gonna hurt you to worship the devil every now and then. That's the devil talking. He so your pastor, he looked like this, but when he talked, he talks like the devil telling you it's all right to have trick-or-treat. It's all right to celebrate these pagan festivals. See, I know who this is now. I don't have to fear the book of Revelation. John is trying to warn me. He ain't trying to scare me. This thing come looking like this, he tell you, you do know it's okay if a man lay down with a man like he laying down with a woman. Yeah, where'd you get that from? 
Torah said, a man ain't supposed to lay down with another man like he laid down with a woman. And then this thing say, oh, I know you don't still believe Torah. That's been done away with. So now when you go into these churches, it's full of men laying down with other men. And women laying down with other women as with men. Why? Because this told them it's cool. It looked like this, but when it talked, it talked with this. This is always, the, the dragon is always going to fight Torah. Yahuwah says that his laws are forever. His laws, his statutes and commandments. He said before, even Hamasha said before one jot or one tittle, and y'all know, before one yod or one tithe of the word of Yah fell, heaven and earth will pass away. Then here come this thing, looking like this, but talking like this, saying the law been done away with. And God nerve to tell you, and Paul said it. <laughs> and all of Paul's life, he was fighting this thing right here. Paul's whole life, all of his preaching and teaching, he was fighting this thing right here. That look one way and say something else. And now y'all thinking that this is that this was Paul. In the kingdom, he going to slap fire from y'all. This thing come talking about, oh, by the way, after the death of, 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 uh, of white Jesus, there is no more covenant. Oh, who's talking? That's the devil. One of our benedictions is the Elohim of the everlasting covenant. This covenant that we're in, Zion, is not a temporary covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. If it was a temporary covenant, why Hamashiach die? He should just let it go. But he couldn't let it go because our covenant is an everlasting covenant. That's not what this thing said. This thing says, this thing comes looking like this and says, you do know uh, in the New Testament, it's no longer about Israel. It's about the church. You say, what the heck? And you start believing it because it looked like this. Then you realize later it says, has Yah been, has, has Yah done away with Israel? Yah forbid. Now you go, who said that? Then who's saying that he is done away with Israel? It must be this dragon that's coming to you looking like this. I am here to I am here this thing saying this. Oh, by the way, you don't have to read the Old Testament because you know the European white church has replaced the quote unquote Jew now. There is no more Jews or Gentiles. It's just one church. You're like, what did you just say? <laughs> so we don't exist no more. So we have been replaced. No, heathen. What actually happened was because of unbelief, some of the natural branches got plucked off. But Yah will reestablish us into the kingdom. All we got to do is turn. You the one better be careful. Because of Yah spared not the natural branches, and you eh, 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 but caused them to have to go. You ain't got a chance. You act a fool. That's what the book really says. The scriptures are just fables and mythology. Who said that? Oh, the devil? Because Kepha said we have not followed cunningly devised fables. So if somebody now saying it's a fable, and Kepha said we haven't followed cunningly devised fables, oh, that's that dragon. Our scripture says, wives, obey your husband. You go to church. <laughs> you don't really think that y'all wants a wife to actually obey her husband, do you? Sheep talking with the mouth of the devil. 
Of course, I expect the wife to obey their husband. The Bible said it. Husband, love your wife and be willing to give your life for her, just like Hamashiach gave his life for the congregate, for the assembly. <laughs> man, ain't nobody got to love nobody that deep now. Come on, man. Who is talking? Who is preaching this? The dragon. Using your pastor, using your cousin, using your bishop, using their pope, because he ain't mine, using the cardinal, using your quote unquote holy fathers, using your rabbis or whoever. Yes, on this channel, we expose it. Telling children you don't have to obey your parents. It depends. You don't have to honor and father, honor your father and mother. It depends. Are they worthy of your honor? That ain't what it says. And plus, if you knew Hebrew, you would know that honoring our, our father and our mother don't really, uh, does not only mean our immediate mom and dad. It also means Abraham and Sarah. Get it straight, you heathen. Cause that's that's grandmama, that's our big mama, Sarah, and our, and the daughters of Sarah is supposed to go read about their grandmama to understand how Sarah called him Lord, which means my master. And he said, if you want to be a daughter of Sarah, you'll understand how to call your husband Lord and not be afraid and ashamed of what these other heifers is going around here doing. And these heathens, and these satanic witches. Now nah, you're a daughter of, of Sarah. See, see, we honor our fathers and our mothers. Now the devil said, you ain't got to listen to that. Anything else? Yeah, we tell our young people, you know, if you're going to be a hoe, it's a good thing to be a hoe right now. You should be a hoe while you're young now. Go out there hoeing. The scripture said, no, you ought to teach the young man how to possess their vessels with honor. What do you think the whole circumcision is on about? The circumcision is about covenant. It's a covenant relationship, and our covenants are supposed to be protected until we join our covenant with another woman who's also in covenant, and those two become one for life. That's what we teach until death do us part. No, nah, show your wild oats. Have a be a hoe and be a hoe monger. You'll have a wonderful life. And then you talk to these ex hoes and these ex hoe mongers, and they go, You know what, man? It was a rough life. Why? That's the dragon talking. It looked like this. I'm going to talk with this. Bible says, Yah, your Hoshua says, or, or through the scriptures, to tell us. That we should be sober, be sober minded, especially now because we're getting in the last days. But this thing is telling everybody be high, which is another lie because in reality, you're not high, you're low. You're not getting high, you're getting low. When you cloud your mind, because that's really where the word came from, the clouds. So the idea of being loaded means that now you're cloudy, you're clouded, your thinking and your intellect and your vision, everything is clouded by the drugs. They took the cloudiness out, right? And just said, oh, a cloud is high. So when I'm loaded, I'm high. No, really, when you get loaded, you go low. So who's telling you to do that? The devil. Yahuwah is telling us to have a, 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 a sound mind, a clear mind. To be able to think, especially in these last days. Yahakana said, That's that beast that came out. He 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 got two horns, which represent his powers go it's on both sides, but it's the same beast that he's teaching the same thing to everybody. What is that? And I'll get to this in the next lesson. Seek money. That's it. And then, and then Yahushua said, no, seek first the kingdom. But then this thing come and say, no, man, 
what you gotta seek first is you gotta seek first that dollar bill. And then and then you go, who's talking? And when you step back, you go, oh, that's a dragon back there. That's the devil behind that preacher, that pastor, that Sunday school teacher, that deacon, and anybody else that's going against y'all's word. Don't listen to this thing. That second beast that come up out of there, Israel, don't listen to nothing it got to say. I don't care what it looks like. It ain't about what it look like. It's about what it talk like. The law be done away with. Okay, so Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other Elohims before Yahuwah. This thing says it's okay to have other gods. Our Ten Commandments say no more, no graven image. This thing said me have as many graven Im images as you want. Matter of fact, our whole religion is based on graven images. This thing says, uh, I mean, Yah says, don't take the name of Yah in vain. Then this thing says, you can take his name in vain anytime you get ready. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Yah says, remember the Shabbat. This thing says the Shabbat been done away with. You can keep any day you want or don't keep no days at all or keep every day, whatever. Yah says, honor your father and your mother. This thing says it don't matter. It depends on what they do or what they don't do, whether they deserve your honor. Yah says, Yahuwah says, you shall not murder. This thing says, you can kill your baby if, if the baby's unborn. She don't need to live. You have a right to your own body, but she don't have a right to her body. Kill her. She's in the womb. Kill her now. Don't even let her breathe. Kill her now. Then you go, who's talking? Find out. It's this thing. Thou shall not kill, but yet in your music. I laid this Negro down. I folded this one here. I did this and that. Where's that coming from? Oh, this thing. That looks like this, but talks like this. You shall not commit adultery. But this thing says, it's all right. I'm saving all my love for you. I know you got a family and whatever, but I'm saving all my love for you. That's why you drowned in the bathtub. Because after a while, y'all get sick of this. I'm going to show you. Y'all wins. When I was coming up there, I'm talking about if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who the hell said that? You said that? Oh, that's the devil. How about me and Mrs. Jones? You and who? She's married. She's off limits. Once she gets married, she's no more on limit. I don't care if she throw it at you. I, you can't take it. You got an uncle, man, that proved that. His name was yourself. Potiphar's wife threw it at him every day. He didn't take it. She got so she got so hot and bothered. She chased, she grabbed him when he was using the bathroom and she grabbed his clothes. And he took off running and said, No way. Why? I follow Yah. So what are they teaching you in these whorehouses? Shoot, if she going to give it to you, bro, you going to get it. You understand what I'm talking about now? See how we can move all that scary, mysterious stuff away and see the truth that our cousin is trying to teach us in captivity so that we can recognize who this devil is? Eight, thou shalt not steal. He come around talking about, well, it depends on what? Whether you're going to get caught or not. And you go, who said that? Oh, it's the dragon. The devil said that through this preacher. At this point, everybody in this chat should be saying, why in the hell are we listening to this preacher? <laughs> and that's, where, that's my point. Why would you spend another second listening? After all the things that Maury have ran down to you, 
why would you listen to another anything coming against you? Why? Don't lie, which means don't give a false testimony against your brother. And yet this thing said, if you want your YouTube channel to grow, <laughs> you want some more followers on Chapman, Facebook or whatever, lie on somebody, boy, call them something, do something. Or if you mad at somebody wanting to go to jail, make up, make up something on them. Especially if a woman want to put a, put a man in prison, all she got to do is go in there and sniffle. <laughs> and it could be wrong. Okay, I, I'm just talking about, he said, don't lie. So if you lie, who's talking? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy brother or thy neighbor. You can't lie on people. So who's telling you that it's okay to lie on people? I never shall forget when I first started on YouTube because I didn't understand what uh I didn't understand what social media was, you know. I'm I'm just I'm studying, I'm preaching, right? And I never forget that I had a, a one of the messages came across and said something about um I don't agree with what you said, and you're you're lying about such and such. And I must have, I must have, whoo, whoo, I went completely off on this person for calling me a lie for teaching the script, right? And she was the person who wrote it, right? And I never forget who to say. This is the internet. You can't let that get to you. People just do that. I said, people just do what? They just write stuff and they just lie. It's the internet. That's just what they do on the internet. I'll never forget that as long as I live. I said, but the commandment said, you can't lie on people. You can't bear false witness. It's against Torah. So who is telling people that you can? It's the one that appears like this, but talks with this. How about this one? You've heard, all oh, y'all heard this in church. Thou shall not covet. You're not supposed to covet thy neighbors, nothing. His house, his wife, his, 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 his manservant, which means his workers, his staff, anything. That's your neighbors. But now in these whorehouses, you got the preachers saying, you know what, if, if it look good, if you think you can get it, so now you got a whole nation of Israel living in covetousness, which, which Paul told us is idolatry, by the way. Oh, I want his house. Oh, I want his car. Oh, I wish I had his wife. Oh, I wish I had his clothes. Oh, I wish I had his bicycle. Oh, I wish I had his shoestrings. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? You covered everything. You know, I wore, a, uh, I have another chain with a lion on it. You know, I'm from Tribal Jews, so I'll be representing, right? I see Maury wearing jewelry. That chain was $11. <laughs> I mean, even if it was real, that, that, that would be my business. But I'm just letting people know, like, so you covered in a chain. That I was, I was actually on a walk. I was walking, and it was an open booth, and it was some. It was a foreigner, and he was selling like little trinkets. I walked by the table, and I saw that line. I said, "Man, I like that. That's cool." He said, "He said, do you like that one?" I said, "Yeah, I like that one." He said, "Do you do you? I have two. Do you want two of them?" I said, "Yeah, give me two of them. How much are they, man?" He said, "I I give you both of them for eleven dollars. You give me eleven dollars, I give you two. I said, you gonna give me two of them lines for $11? Man, I reached in my pocket with the quickest man, gave him $11, wore the chain on YouTube, and people say, look at him wearing jewelry. <laughs> so $6, what was that? What's 11? Five and a half, $5.50 per chain, and together, chain and thing together. I got two for $11. And somebody covered in the Monrays jewelry. That's so sad, ain't it?
you would have wrote me, I would have just gave you the $5.50. You can go buy you one. <laughs> we could both have one. You ain't got to covet. That's so beneath us as a people. Who's telling us to do that? You know what? I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> because the, our Torah teaches us, Zion, that we ought to seek first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. And all these things that we are in need of, all that will be added. The kingdom of Yah is the covenant relationship that we have with our king. So what is Yahakanan telling us? He's saying, in the last day, when the devil really gets mad, when he after he's kicked out of, of heaven, of the Shamayim, he's going to end up down here to wreak havoc on this planet. But because he won't be able to do it himself, he will lose the power. He will have to use somebody else to do it. And I'll pick this up on the next one. He's going to use an institution, a religious institution. Once he conquers the world, he will then set up a religion and the religion will be set up to support white European supremacy. I promise that's what that's all about. And it will be spread all over the world. So anytime, anywhere that white supremacy is challenged, you will have to endure some type of punishment under this new system. And, and, and whether you like it or not, that's what the scriptures teach. And even some Europeans have written and said, yep, yeah, this is Rome and <laughs> this, this is the church. And this is... Even some Europeans can't get around it. Bad that they don't want to write it. They're trying to be, they're trying to make a commentary and they're like, I don't want to write this, but I, I guess I got to at least put the name down. What are you scared of? If you are a commentary, a commentator, then commentate. Oh, you're not from the tribe in the house of Israel like me, huh? So therefore, I'm going to tell it. I know your job. You exercise the power of the beast, which is the government and, and the system of white supremacy, slavery, um, uh, taking the resources from every single person. And not a, I know where you're from. And all these religious systems got these pictures and things all over. And you want to say, don't read the Old Testament and the laws done away with. And don't read Revelation because it's scary. Why? Because the whole time it's exposing what the Bible is all about. And the end days is going, ain't going to be bad for you. I mean, it's not going to be good for you. It's going to be bad for you. I'm trying to tell you. Whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven. You know, I think I'm going to pick it up right here because here you're going to see that these false prophets are going to start mimicking our true prophets. Remember our true prophets that we read about in chapter uh, 11? Remember in chapter 11, we got prophets that came in the last day and they, and they preached in fire, you know. So the devil is going to use this prophet to mimic them. <laughs> They're all going to get killed. Nothing that they do and nothing that they set up is going to ultimately work. That is the story of the revelation. The dragon is the devil. The first beast is the European nations that are under European control. That's a beast that took over the world to, to hunt us down to kill us. And the third, the third, the second beast or the third entity that we're dealing with is this teaching, which will be called later the false prophet. That will seek to say one thing looking like a lamb, but as he actually talks, it'll come out like the demon or the devil he really is. And by the time we get to chapter 16, he will have brought forth an image. And all people will be bowing down to the image of the beast. Except the remnant. 
Yeah, sap the remnant. We've already pledged allegiance. We got a king. We've already pledged allegiance. It'll be blood to the horse's bridle. We already pledged allegiance. You ain't scaring me. No more devil, nor your system, your government, or your religion. Why? I'm on his side now. I know it's about us. And I hope that some of y'all can see it now for the first time. I'll get more into it later. But even the thing that everybody worried about, 666, I'm going to explain that. Don't nobody know what they really mean. Are you sure about that? Because I submit to you, everybody who got the letter knew who he's talking about. I said everybody that he wrote to, not the ones who stole the letter, but the ones he wrote to, I literally submit to you. That all the people who read it went, oh, okay, I got that. I'll be watching out for you. Hold on, Zion, it won't be long. If you learn something, if you were helped, would you consider helping the art? Sending a gift, sending some monetary support? Would you consider that so that we can keep doing what we do? So that the world will wake up before it's too late. Israel got to wake up. Our king is coming back. And we can't be expecting to go back with our king still in Babylon. And still scared to read our Bible. And the Bible is about our king. <laughs> yes, Zion. We appreciate it. Now, put the one millions in here as we exit. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll be coming forth, hopefully, with some more videos. Uh, we got a couple more in the uh, the Black Series thing that we're doing. Because we are not Black People Series. We're going to fix that. And then we're going to come back dealing with this, with this second beast. We don't have to fear our own book. We win, Zion. In the end! We win!